Hey everyone, welcome back to Project Wood. We're on part two, the making of our modern uh, crib. So I'm just gonna make one little change to the first piece we're gonna cut out, which is the star. So just looking at here on the camera, I've added on a little piece that we're gonna leave on. So I've extended this line and I have extended from this corner all the way through this corner and kept going. So what that does is gives us a 30 degree angle here. And when that sits on the roof of the crib, as you see later on, um, we'll get the star effect, but we'll also have this little piece of wood uh, to help us glue it onto the roof. So all the pieces have been scribed, so we just have to get now and uh, start cutting everything out. So for the star, basically it's gonna be put into the uh, vise at a vertical orientation like that. And we're gonna cut down all our lines, bit by bit, one by one, until we have our uh, shape removed. So I'm gonna get a start on that, we'll cut three or four, and we'll come back to you then at the, uh, the end of the star cutting. We'll take our bench hook, get our tenants already. Basically, what we want to do here is to make sure our saw is always vertical. Um, so that means we're going to actually rotate the piece around in the vise. Just hold that to that camera there. So if I want to cut, say, this line here, I have to make sure that that's vertical to the ground. And then we'll saw straight down. And we can use our trice for to help us line that up in the vise. So just tighten it lightly. Put your vice or put your tricycle up to the line and just tap it so that the line is straight up. Tighten your vice and then we will cut them. Now we're working with laminate wood here so you don't go uh, too hard at it. Nice and gentle with your saw. So we're cutting quite a bit down into that lot of the woods here to get a little bit of squeaking on your saw. So we've cut down along the line here. We'll just repeat that then for all our lines all the way around. So we'll cut out this corner for you and then cut to the end. We're just repeating the process all the way around. <laughs> Listen for the sound, you will have to hear the tone getting higher, which means we're down close to the bottom. Keep all our scraps for the bin. So that's the effect we're going for there. Now, so I said, we'll keep sawing and come back at the end. Just be careful here that we take off the extra piece that. I have shown there a few moments ago. There's just two more cuts now to do. Fair enough, just one more little cut. Again, use your choice cutters to make sure everything is uh, vertical. That will save you no end of problems, especially with sanding later on. Okay, 
so that's our star. We'll need a bit of sanding before we attach it to the crib. That's our design there. And we'll be using this little extra piece we added on just to keep it uh, sitting up nicely on the roof of the crib. Okay, so next up we'll move on to sorting out uh, the base. Okay, so the base has uh, three pieces to be removed. Uh, we have a piece removed here for the uh, two sides. And we have a little splay that we have marked on the front. So we'll start with the splay. That'll be going into our bench hoop and vise. Now a common mistake I see with people cutting out splays is that they, they put a vertical in their vise and they try to cut down that line. But really, you know, you can go quite a tight angle, holding it flat on the bench is probably um, the best way to get good results. You can also clamp it down, which will uh, help with the cutting. Just grab a G clamp or a sash clamp, small sash clamp. help you keep it there when you're sawing away. So we need to move that over a little wee bit. Now we're cutting almost along the grain here so it's going to be quite slow. Tenon saws are very effective across the grain, just a little bit slower down the grain. door stopper for you rather than wasting that. Okay so the um the two joints then a little bit of sawing down on the uh, cheeks here this one must will come off with just two saw cuts so we'll start with that one So vertically in the vise, we're dropping it down as far as we can. We always want to keep our wood in the vise down as low as possible. And remember to saw on the X side of the line. parallel with the uh, bench top so we have to be careful that we don't snap the laminate board so put it down as far as you can in the vise sides here on the uh, other joint, we'll just zoom in on that. So I'm always quite obsessive about making sure that the saw cut is not on the line, it's not left of the line. You've got to always saw to the X side or the Y side of the line. If you want good tight joints, that's the only way to go. Okay, 
Now to remove that, we'll take our one inch chisel. Some places they call them one inch, other places 25 mil. We put that over the uh, leg of the bench. That gives us more bang for our buck than we are chiseling out. And we want to drive that chisel down two or three millimeters. Do that from both sides. chisel in the same depth about two or three millimeters and we just tap that down. This will give you lovely clean shoulders on your joints. Some people like to use scroll saws or coping saws. We always find that students have more success by using this method. Again, three taps. And just to repeat that till you're all the way through. Nearing the bottom now, it might just pop out by itself here. Okay, so that's our nice and clean housing there for our joint. That's the base uh, basically made. Move up along onto the two sides there now next. Now we're onto our two sides. A little bit of saw cutting here. Simple saw cut on this one. It's slightly more difficult on that one. So back into the vise. This is just broken. And a few saw cuts there just to get. Um, that joint removed. Remember to stay on the X side of the line. So I'm having a little bit of trouble with that handle on that voice. I need to get some metal epoxy. Again, you want to keep the uh, wood here nice and vertical. And so on the X side again. Pretty simple joint there. So that one, if you remember, that is slotting just into the back left corner here. Actually, no, this is for the right hand one. So it's a good fit straight out of the box there. And if it's too loose, you can always put a screw in here. And if it's too tight, just pair some material off cheeks of the female side. So leave, leave that in there for a moment so it gives us a view of where we're going. Now the next piece has a few um, extra cuts. So we'll take off this corner first. 
sharpen my saw. I must do a video on that as well. Um, it's kind of vital to sharpen your saw every three or four projects, depending on how much cutting is in each one. This makes life easier. in the wood. Uh, if it's a problem for you, you can put some WD-40 on the side of your saw. That piece there is quite simple. Now that was designed from the outset to have a screw placed on the uh, X mark here. So we'll drill a hole with our pilot bit for that. We'll use a one and a half mil pilot bit. We have a few other holes to drill, so we'll take care of all those while we have the drill in hand. So we'll just be using a uh, probably a four by forty screw here. We'll um, attach that in there now just to get a look at it. Let's clear away any sawdust you have here. And we'll check the fit of our side piece as well while we're here. Just slide under there. So that looks like a good fit. We can leave that screwed in until later on. Remember with screws to um, always let them back out. And then go back again. a much tighter fit. Uh, we also have two pilot holes here on the base so we might as well drill those. Just have two pilot bits here and that is for our side here to fit on, put them on the back side. The back side piece also has a pilot hole that needs to be drilled. So again, just in terms of efficiency to while you're drilling. At the one time. Now we're getting there. Just the roof to do in a second. We've got a couple of splays to take off are two pieces, one for the side, one for the back. So again, we'll go back into the bench hoop. 
use our cheat clamp here. Get a better hold on it. Might not be able to reach it now. opportunity to really use all the uh, front and back teeth to kind of keep them even with the rest of the teeth on the saw. Another free door stop. And we have a similar one here on the back piece. So clamps are great, especially if you're um, not too strong or um, you know if you're a younger woodworker and you haven't built up the uh, the muscles yet. It's um, great help in keeping pieces secure, which is uh, not alone safe, but gives you a nice accurate result. Three screws for that. So even a three by thirty will do for this piece here. And we can put one in the base for the moment. Take this apart to sand it so um, there's no need to stick it all together permanently. Okay. So that's a nice strong structure for the roof to be mounted onto. I made the mistake of not marking a pilot hole here for. Um, the sides, we might do that now while we're here. Just draw a rectangle around that. I think one screw will do on that side, it's not really going to be supporting a lot of weight or a lot of weight. So, even though you fully mark out your projects as much as you can before you cut them, there are at times in the making where you will have to, um, you know. Mark extra stuff and cut out extra stuff as well. Okay, so will I put a screw on that? Um, we'll have a think about moving on to the uh, roof structure, and uh, not too far from the end at that stage. Put a screw in here for the uh, left side. Again, everything is just in what we call a dry fit stage. So uh, we've got a sanding to do, and maybe a little bit of fitting of each joint just to really tidy them up. Tidying up of this particular area. Need to get that to sit in a little bit more flush. 
that's the uh, the basic bottom. Pretty happy with that. Modern looking. Obviously, this is the front area of the crib here. So just the roof to uh, crack on with now and give it a good sanding and stick our star on. Now, if you want, you can get people in the family or yourself to decorate this. Um, you know, on the roof, you can put the moss or leaves, straw on the base, whatever, whatever takes your fancy there. So the top is some intricate uh, sawing. It's going to be sawing at an angle, but straight down, and then we'll remove the uh, the waste here. So we'll start off with one of the pieces into the vise. Make sure it's straight, and uh, we'll just saw down. We'll saw down on the X side of these lines here. Again, we don't want them too tight, I said in the marking out video, because we're dealing with laminate wood, and if these are tight angle joints, we do have a propensity to break, so we'll try and keep that in mind. Keeping an eye on our lines that we're going straight. Stop me from doing a kind of a flat roof on it as well if this is too difficult. Now I'm just going to pop that out with a chisel. We'll take it out in little pieces. We'll use a smaller chisel, 18 millimeter chisel here. We want to angle the chisel roughly 30 degrees to match the uh, trench. We can use our trench loop as a stop. Some woodwork benches have a little stop block here built in. Something we might add in later on to this bench. We're going to pop out the ones are pretty easy because we are along the grain. Not my best ever sawing there, but we'll, um, we'll sort that out. That should pop out gently. So it's a quite a complex piece, it's a rhombus kind of shape, that gives us a nice angle there on the uh, roof. So we need to repeat that then for the other uh, piece of roof, and we'll come back then in a second and fit those up. Okay, so I've decided to make this a little bit simpler because cutting out two of those splay joints uh, it's just straight from marking out. It mightn't uh, be the easiest thing for projects so early in the project wood series. So what we're going to do is take the other part and slide it in. So it's a lovely fit. We've got a nice cut on the first joint. And from there you can decide how far up you want the roof to protrude out. So, you know, even by eye, something kind of two thirds of the way down. Would look okay. Now we're going to get our pen and just mark around that. So this will actually simplify um, even the marking out 
um, because you only have to mark out one piece uh, in the marking out video it will um, definitely make this piece easier for you so just trace around that and that will give you a much um, a much easier mark out job starting it in here now side we'll get to take those out and we can shine those on the end grain here on the side grain to get our saw cut angles this should still be 30 degrees but because we've measured it now off the piece we don't even need to check that it's just going to be a nice fit okay so we'll scribe that and get that cut out and then we'll come back for the fitting of that okay so we're just cleaning off the uh, bottom of the trench here Should be able to get in at that trench with a 12 mil chisel. And we also want to clean the bottom of the trench on the leaf first piece. So just removing any excess wood there that didn't come up in the sawing process. Okay, so the work area is getting nice and messy now, we're getting to the end. We'll give it a bit of a clean before we uh, attach the roof on. But uh, that should be your nice 30 degree roof down. That's your first joint here. This one should slot nicely down into that. It'll look very complicated to your eye. But um, marking out in that way I showed you, it'll slot together nicely. And we'll get that overlap hopefully. There we go. We have that nice 30 degree overlap. Um, if you do having joints all the way in, the two roofs will line up perfectly straight. But for this modern design, as we said in the marking out, we will um, keep them kind of offset like that. So next up then is our last marking out job, which is to take an angle off the top, it'll be a 30 degree angle off the top of each of the pillars and that will allow our roof to sit nice and snug on top and that is taking shape nicely now okay so we'll take everything apart get them ready for sanding and next i'll just show you how to take off a 30 degree angle off the top here and you can repeat that then for the uh, opposite side just bear in mind that you get the angles in the right orientation, so this one needs to go that way. There's no harm putting a little mark on it. And then this one needs to go that way, just so we know when we go to mark that out in a minute. So even if we just take off one of the sides here, So we need a 30 degree angle on that and we can use our set square here if we've got a sliding bevel even better so you can see there the angle that's going to come off that we bring that across with our tri square there's our face edge there so all that will be coming off It'll give us a nice 30 degree angle there. Now to cut that off, um, ideally when you have angles like that going cross grain, um, chop saw would be the best. But since we're trying to do everything by hand, 
suggest we will try that with a bench cube. Again, you can clamp it down if you find this is a little bit difficult to hold on to. You can put a clamp on from the back even here. Always use whatever help you can to make the process safer. designing project as well the depth of cut you can actually achieve with your tenon saw so I always try and like to think that 70 mil is kind of the max that gives me a little bit of room for error so that's our 30 degree angle there and we'll repeat that then for the other side surface to sand in this project so you might want to use wrong side there sorry you might want to use um, an orbital sander it could be sanding for a while by hand again smoothing off any of the joints with a chisel before you go sanding As you can see a nice 30 degree angle there now on that and pop in the other side. And you screw in from the back. I'm hoping this will be a little bit tighter once I fit up the joint there and put a longer screw in. Uh, if not, we can put some glue in <coughs> there as well to help us out. Now put a roof back together. There's a lot of sand on the roof. I'll also probably uh, put some nice little splay angles just on some of the corners. That's a personal uh, choice, I suppose, for everybody. Okay, so that's sitting there nicely now. So I'm getting a slightly less than 30 degree angle here on my roof. But we can adjust that. If we lay down the uh, crib on its back, we'll just put our roof sitting on that. I would have to change the angles there on the uh, uprights just to suit that. We can just cut those off. Okay, so join us in a few minutes where we'll um, screw on the roof and uh, that'll be the end of our crib project. Okay, so everything's put back together there. I've cut new angles on the uh, uprights. So I'd originally planned to have those at 30 degrees. Um, 
with the new way I showed how to mark out the roof, which is a lot easier. You won't even have to worry about that 30 degrees. Um, we just sat the roof down and got the marking off them like we did earlier. So after that then, it is a matter of you placing things where you want to place them. That roof is sitting nice and level there. I want to bring it so it's kind of sitting up close to the front. Kind of in that position there if you look at it sideways. So I need to mark a position there for a pilot hole to screw on the, uh, the roof. So we'll just hold it in place, probably on its back, probably the easiest. Maybe not. Okay, so I'll just place it again where I want to locate it. Get the pen and pencil and just mark the upper two sides of the uprights. See that in a second. So I'm going to have a rectangle here and a rectangle over there. So we'll just complete those rectangles. It's quite a finicky and uh, probably a little bit more difficult part of the project as well. So don't have to be overly accurate. We're just trying to be super accurate with the position of our screws. And again, when we have this all sanded up, we'll definitely um, put some glue on here as well. So that's two positions for the roof pilot holes. Let me drill those through. You could create two rectangles like we did on the base, but I think it's a light enough roof. One screw, one screw on each side should be plenty. Pilot holes there located. Place that back on the top. Just make sure they're lined up. That looks pretty good. A couple of screws here. Just going to use shorter screws so we don't split the wood. Got uh, I think like three by twenty fives. They'll all be included in the kit anyway, so you don't have to worry about. Getting the right side of the screw. Okay, now make sure it's well lined up before we. So those screws should be going in at the same angle as the roof. And we want to make sure they're nice and flush as well. So it's even quite strong with one screw. Putting in the additional screw over here should really. Tighten the whole thing up. Okay, so that's the roof secured. Okay, I'm very happy with that. We'll definitely look at putting a couple of those angles, uh, maybe one on here, maybe another one on the front edge here. That's again personal stuff you can decide later on. I might even put one on today. Top ridge. So finally, then we come back to our piece, the resistance, our star, which we want to get all sanded up. Where it's located, it's completely up to yourself. You can go on here. You could go at the back, in the middle. You can even put it onto the uh, other side. So I think I'm going to go with. Kind of level with the uh, other roof piece and screw it down. Now, because the roof angles have kind of changed, it's not sitting up 
perfectly like I had originally planned. But actually, it looks maybe by default much nicer, kind of sitting at an angle. So we'll need a little pilot hole in this piece of the star. We're working with a very small piece of wood now, so we're going to have to be careful there. So we'll definitely work with getting the proper center here. A little X from corner to corner. Put it into the vise for him. I want to give it all the chance it has in the world to not break because it's so small. Just make sure we're off the right angle. So I need to go in at right angles to the side. That's fine. Just line that up with the voice. And go straight down. That's our pilot hole there. Okay, we'll use a small screw. I'm going to be very gentle putting this on. So yeah, I think I'm going to go over that position there. Again, when we decorate it and probably the kids get hatted and painted, I'm sure they will um, cover up any sort of blemishes on it. And we're going to go very gentle here. 